All right, I'm going to start recording for rigging now. Um, yeah, the purpose of the rigging lecture is to just, like, get you to the point where you can rig a game jam model really quickly and easily without too much worries um, and have, like, a basic knowledge of IK and Blender, inverse kinematics. We covered that in the animation PowerPoint last time, but only, like, superficially. We didn't really explain how to implement it or even use it. So I'm going to show you guys how to use it, and I will drop some related resources. There's a YouTube channel that I really like that sort of does um, quick animation tutorials and rigging tutorials, and it gives you a healthy introduction into rigging. Um, does everyone know what rigging is? I was curious. Fellas? Yes. Yeah? Cool. Getting a mesh to move? Um, yeah, giving a mesh bones, primarily, yeah. Mesh bones too? Yeah. And string bones? Yeah. And spring bones? Yeah, yeah, something something like that. Spring bones, I was going to yeah. say that, like, if if you're the kind of person that's, like, mostly uh, oriented around rigging human characters, the quickest, uh, I believe there is, like, a, an add-on to Very Blender... Fun. Uh, yeah, Rigify that literally allows you to rig a humanoid in like seconds. It does a decent job. It does. Yeah. But understanding how to do it yourself gives you a really good idea of how the add on works because the add on generates so much stuff that it's it takes forever to like kind of understand what it is you're supposed to be using or not. Like, it, it doesn't do a good job of hiding the buttons you're not supposed to click. Does that make sense? It, it's a great add-on, but it gives you a billion buttons, and you don't know which ones are for you and which ones are, like, there for debugging purposes or just kind of part of the add-on. That, that's my takeaway from it. But I've used it in the past, yeah. Rigify. So. Great tinkerer. Uh, not great for learning, but it's a great tinkerer. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get started. <laughs> so... Okay, all right, glasses are coming off. <laughs> um, give me a second. Okay, uh, switch the recording camera over. Uh, back to screen share. Ooh, magical mouse. Uh, close that down. Put Blender on. I'm gonna open up a recent model that we use for the animation workshop, and I'm gonna try to explain how we do rigging. I'm going to go over like the very most basic best practices of rigging here, guys. So this should be like, this should be a pretty, pretty quick one comparatively. Okay. Here is our, I think, mysterious protagonist.blend. Yeah, here we go. This is from the old animation workshop that we did last week. Um, it is just a dude over here. He's doing a really bad walk <laughs> yeah and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna delete his bones <laughs> there we go all right i'm gonna send you guys this blend file right now so that you can follow along if you want to but yeah here we go save this uh and i'm going to drop it in the discord forum post so you guys can go to 2023 content uh, rigging in Blender, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, attach it like so. Mysterious protagonist, mysterious protagonist. Oh boy. Uh, give me two seconds, guys. Sorry. Mysterious protagonist. Where is he? Where have I placed him? I know this file is saved somewhere. Downloads. It's in downloads. That's great. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mysterious protagonist. Here we go. Post. There you go. Right there. Rigging and Blender. For everyone that's curious. And follow along. So here we go. This is a model. And we need to give it a skeleton. So the way that we give a model a skeleton is with what Blender calls armatures. Uh, armatures are another word for skeleton, rig. Here's an armature. By default, armature is visualized like so. It's a big, like, pyramid-looking thing. This is supposed to represent a bone. 
we're going to go ahead and go into edit mode with a new armature. So the way that I added the armature was you can either click add armature and it'll spawn one in like so, or you could do shift a armature and that'll also, it's the same thing as the add menu. I prefer to use shift a. I'm going to grab this with G and I'm going to move it up inside of him around where his pelvis is. That's usually best practice for, uh, for humanoids, but you can use this for anything skills today. And the next thing I'm going to do is while I have the armature selected and I am in object mode, I'm going to click down here to the object data properties, whatever um, this one is right here, not the bones, but the object data. The one that looks like a stick figure that's leaping or running. And I'm going to check this box that says in front. And what that's going to do is it's going to render it in front of everything else. So we get x-ray vision on the bone. I'm going to go into edit mode. And in edit mode, I am just going to do this job of positioning this bone so that it kind of lines up with our guy. It's very important that you constrain your, uh, your grab operations. If you grab this and you move it to where you think it is, like, you know, I, I just do grab and I say, oh, you know, that looks like it's in the right spot. From a different angle, it's actually offset. Like he has scoliosis now. So we, we can't have that. So it's very important that you, you constrain by pressing the appropriate axis um, at each step. So G, Y, E, Z, G, Y. Extruding works the same in armatures as it does in meshes. Um, I'm gonna give this guy like a little neck bone over here uh, and a head bone like so. Um, yeah, and we'll do a leg and an arm. We're only gonna do one leg and one arm, but yeah, this is like the initial process is just positioning the bones to roughly where they belong for the neutral pose of your character. To make this a little easier on yourself, you can enable widgets by clicking this drop down up here, and this will give you movement related widgets, these nice blue arrows and green arrows and red arrows, and that might make extruding and positioning these a little bit easier for you guys. Shift D also duplicates an object, so I can move that to the right there. Let's see, I can use these arrows here to kind of more precisely position this so that it's inside of his shoulder. It's very important to constantly adjust your view in order to uh, identify where exactly something really is, not where it looks like it is. Some animators actually prefer to use multiple viewports at the same time. So I'm just extruding with E and positioning this where I think it belongs from multiple angles. This guy, uh, he's missing a couple of fingers, sort of. I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. I do know what happened to him. I just, I'm going to pretend I don't. I had to use a remeshing modifier on him because he was non-manifold. You, you might notice his name is Manifold Man. Being manifold comes with sacrifice. <laughs> Great sacrifice. In order to become manifold, he had to sacrifice his fingers. They were, uh, they were kind of non-manifold. His fingernails were missing some geometry when I imported him and uh, I could not be bothered to precisely reconstruct them. So he became, he, uh, he had to lose them in his pursuit of being a manifold. <laughs> um, let me give this like a uh, sort of central position like that. Cool. Okay. Um, Actually, uh, yeah, we can delete that bone. There we go. So just nice three bones for the arm. Um, I'm gonna also do some bones for the foot. So uh, on the same side of our skeleton, I'm just gonna get this kind of in the center of rotation of his hip. So make sure that this is nice and aligned with his knee. It's a bit of an outwards twist right down there inside of his uh, foot like that. Whoa. Over there. And feet sort of rotate around the uh, the ankle. They don't rotate around the heel, right? So that's why we have that sort of elevated and it's not this like perfectly flat foot as you might be tempted to make it. 
but yeah, that should do. That should do. Let's get this a little bit better positioned. Nice. Nice. Very nice. I'm liking this. Okay, so this is the first step of rigging. You create an armature object in Blender, right? You go into edit mode and you just start extruding these bones around until they're in the right position. That's that's like half of rigging. Only do half of your mesh if it's a symmetrical mesh and we'll explore how to actually mirror things around in a second. The next step, and I'd say this is pretty important, is naming your bones. So let's go down here and let's name this uh, pelvis. So naming is done in this bone properties panel while I'm in edit mode. I can also grab this one and call it a uh, lower back, maybe torso, um, neck, uh, head, and then arm. So this is his left arm. So we're going to name this arm underscore L or dot L doesn't really matter, but it is important that it ends with an L. I'm going to do a capital L. I think that looks better. We'll call this forearm dot L. Again, doesn't matter what exactly you name it, just end it with a dot L and Blender will automatically process those when we mirror it over into dot Rs. So for the right side. Um, and then uh, hand dot L. Not even gonna try to animate his fingers, but if you wanted to do fingers, you would do a bunch of little disconnected bones here for the fingers. Um, and we'll show how to sort of parent them in a second. Call this femur dot L, call this uh, uh, shin dot L, and then uh, foot dot L. And now we are there. So before we move on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save real quick and I'm gonna do a thing. I'm gonna select the mesh, I'm in object mode. I'm gonna select the bones in that order by and holding shift. Notice the bones now have a brightly colored outline whereas the mesh has this dark orange outline. And I'm gonna hit control P with automatic weights. And now if we click on the bone and go into pose mode and we rotate things around, it has become attached to our skin. Our skin is now parented to the bones, which is wonderful. That's really great. Uh, you know, the head now moves naturally. The torso, very nice. There's an algorithm that went in there and automatically figured out what bones are attached to what. I just wanted to show what that looks like, but we're going to be doing that in the future when we actually mirror this. For now, we're only working on one side. So let's go back into edit mode. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna select the, the arm and you'll notice there's a bit of an inconvenience here when we're animating this. I really want the arm to, uh, to, to rotate um, with, the, uh, with the torso here. It already does actually, but I'm gonna take it a step further and I'm gonna select the arm select the torso control p oh they i guess they're already i'm sorry guys never mind uh it's already parented to the torso perfect well excuse me never mind yeah don't don't mind me guys don't mind me if you duplicated it over it's already parented if you so if you duplicate a bone like this uh like it preserves what's connected to what but you can go down here and change the parent so if I parented this bone to the head, this bone that I just duplicated, and I went into pose mode, you see it now rotates with the head. Very nice. Sorry about that. Um, just the point is we want this shoulder to move when the torso moves. And it does, the torso pulls it with it. It's not like the leg here where the leg doesn't move with the torso. So let's fix that. Let's go to this leg. And what I'm gonna do is actually move this guy, uh, whoop. I'm gonna move, move this guy a little bit lower. I just felt like that would be better. And I'm going to make the parent of the femur bone be the pelvis. And now when the pelvis rotates, it pulls the leg with it. Very nice. So I can just, the pelvis is like the center bone in this hierarchy of bones. That's, that's what we want. That's very good. Now, 
we're going to be able to mirror things over. So if I just select all of the bones and I do control M, uh, Y, I think, no, X, no, whoa, okay. Uh, 3D cursor, control M, X. It mirrors the bones over and it does not change your names. There's a, there's a thing, I think it's mirror, armature mirror, uh, Y global. Oh, is it something like that? X, does it, uh, does it change your names? It does not. Hold on, guys. Hold on one second. I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting the, uh, the way that we do this. Mirror Bones Blender, right? There's always Google. Google's always at your disposal. Symmetrize. Symmetrize. Symmetrize armature. That's it. That's all I had to do. I selected the whole armature. I press F3 and I did symmetrize. And it automatically found bones that are uh left and it changed them to dot r for the right side so now we have our full armature i can select the skin i can select the armature do control p with automatic weights and now we have an animatable character that is wonderful can completely animate him animate his arms forearms hands his legs his legs move beautiful Let's take things a step further and let's make this really convenient for the animator by implementing inverse kinematics. So what we're going to do, I'm going to actually take a second, I'm going to take a break here and I'm going to let you guys catch up and, and mess around on your end. I, have you guys been following along? I know I went kind of fast, but uh, yeah, the sacrifices, there were some substantial sacrifices made, William. <laughs> um, yeah, do you guys... Uh, where are we at? Does anyone want to have people been trying to follow along? Just making some bones for a manifold man here. Anyone? I know there's like 10 of you in this call. Someone. <laughs> all right. All right. The people are quiet. I get it. That's all right. That's all right. I'll live. I'll live. So Manifold Man has now been uh, rigged up. He, he is parented to the bones and he's ready to be handed off to an animator. That's great. Um, Manifold Man is, is in pretty good shape. But he's not completely ready yet. Manifold Man is a little annoying to animate. When I try to animate a walk cycle on Manifold Man, I have to manually position all of his feet bones and kind of, you know, figure out where they should go. It's, it's a bit of a process. I, I, we don't like that. We don't want to do things so manually. So instead, we're going to make our lives a little bit easier. We're going to go into edit mode, not pose mode, edit mode. Select the uh, knees on the right side. I'm going to delete the left side of Manifold Man. Manifold Man doesn't need his left side bones. I'm just going to select them all, hit X, delete them. I'm going to keep the uh, original bones we were working with. And at his knees, I'm going to hit E, Y, and just make this like uh, uh, kind of knee bone here. Now it's still connected, so I'm going to just do, um, uh, I think it's uh, P, separate, Oh, no, no, sorry, not, not P. I'm so sorry. Hold on, hold on. E, Y, uh, and then you just press Y. So you select the, if you select a bone and you press Y, it disconnects it. It's the same keybind in 3D modeling. Uh, y disconnects a surface. So I've grabbed his knee, I've pulled it forward, and I've pressed Y and, and just moved this sort of like knee joint out here. doesn't matter where, but just somewhere out in front. Um, we can also specifically change this bone here to display as uh, something else. Um, you can give it a shape, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I'm going to hit this checkbox over here that says deform. This is not going to be a bone that deforms him. It's going to be used to help drive 
inverse kinematics. So I'm going to uncheck the deform box. I'm going to do the same thing at his heel. I'm going to do E, Y, like this. And I'm going to press select the whole bone, press Y, and also going to uncheck the deform box for it. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to rename this uh, foot IK dot L. And I'm going to name this uh, knee target dot L. And then I'm going to select the shin. And I'm going to go here to object constraints. Um, and I am going to select, sorry, hold on, hold on, excuse me guys, uh, yes, yeah, 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 and object constraints, I believe, uh, and it should be, um, oh god, hold on, two seconds, guys. <laughs> oh. Hold on two seconds. Um, is it done in pose mode typically? Yes, it's done in pose mode. Excuse me. You enter pose mode. You go down here to bone constraints. And under bone constraints, you do uh, inverse kinematics. And I'm going to set the chain length to two. I'm going to set the target to armature, specifically the foot IK, and the pole target armature, and knee target. And now his foot has rotated in pretty terribly. It's not looking good. So to fix that, uh, we're going to set the pole angle to 90, like that. Oh, 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 manifold man, you're not doing too great. Negative 90. Brilliant. Okay, now watch what happens when I move this guy around. Woo! Automatic foot movements. Let's go. Let's go. And then the, the knee is doing its best to point at the knee target. So there we go. Manifold man. He's on his way. He's on his way. Manifold man's doing pretty well. Grab him, pull it down. Good stuff. So now we have a very easy to animate leg. Because all we have to animate is this foot target and the leg automatically figures out where to position itself. All we need to worry about is the position of the foot. Let's take it a step further. And I'm going to select uh, the foot bone right here. And in edit mode, I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to select the heel bone. I'm going to do control P, keep offset. And what that's going to do is back in pose mode, uh, the foot now moves when I rotate the heel. So the only thing that I really need to control is the heel, and I can, I can do this stuff right here. This, this heel, the foot target, whatever we're calling this thing that's coming out of his heel. It just makes it easier to animate. However, when we go all the way down here, oh, our leg disconnects. Not great. So what we're going to also do is we're going to uh, go to the bone constraints of the foot, and we're going to do copy location of armature at bone uh, shin. Where's shin? Shin. And we're going to set it to tail, not head, tail. And now, there we go. We've got this like foot that rotates, moves around, and does its best to follow our target. Incredible. Incredible. And now we can select all of this. Whoop, I did control Z a few too many times. Uh, hold on, let's, let me just do a reset. Uh, there we go, the transform. What we can do now is uh, select this guy and do symmetrize again. And now his left side behaves the same. Select him. Select the armature, control P with automatic weights, back to pose mode, and now we can just walk cycle this guy so easily. 
by just doing, yeah, there we go. Grab, shift X, everything was preserved. Boom, boom, great. Good stuff, inverse kinematics, there we go. This is your, uh, that's an introduction to rigging in like 15 minutes flat, but that's so fast. But yeah, we built up a skeleton for this guy and we gave it some fancy properties that let it automatically deform. The key thing here is that you, you use the inverse kinematics constraint, IK, it's right here, inverse kinematics, and uh, you set the chain length to, you know, however long the chain length should be. This is the, the length that is, is kind of solving for position. If you, if you turn up the chain length, what you're doing is you're, you're saying, hey, solve for his entire body's position relative to his foot. So it went all the way up to his uh, pelvis, which is the end of the tree. It's the, the root node of the tree. Um, if we, if I wanted to, I could make his torso be inverse kinematics around his head. I could also do the same thing with his arms. So we can make an elbow target. It's good to, good to practice this. Do an elbow target here uh, by just doing E, Y, I send it backwards, Y again. I'm gonna name this uh, arm uh, elbow target dot R. And then I'm going to make a uh, uh, wrist, I guess. Yeah, something like that. That looks pretty good to me. And uh, I'm gonna name this hand target dot R. So if you guys, if you're struggling to follow along, I'm literally just doing the exact same things that I was doing a second ago with the feet. So just keep working on the feet. Listen to my voice. You might pick up what I'm doing as I'm working on this. So hand target dot R. Gonna also separate this. Going to make sure that this guy keeps <coughs> offset. So when I move, yeah, there we go. Cool. Going to uh, select the forearm now. Going to go into pose mode and add the constraint of inverse kinematics with a chain length of two. The target being armature uh, hand target dot R and the pull target being armature elbow target dot R. And the pull angle should again probably be negative 90. Yeah, that looks pretty right. Yup. Nice. Good stuff. And now, whew, we got a hand. And the hand is doing IK. So if we want this guy to, to hug somebody, all we have to do is just set the target for where to put his hands. And uh, we'll give him, a, give him a hug. Now, there we go. Peace. He's doing the peace sign. It's a very peaceful guy. Permanently locked in the state of peace sign. <laughs> Poor manifold man. Sorry. Sorry things turned out this way. Now, one more thing. We also have to make sure that this uh, hand never goes beyond uh, where it should be. So we got to do copy location of the forearm at the tail. And there we go. Manifold man. Good stuff. Select all of him. Uh, reset the transform by doing F3 and then looking up reset unkeyed. And, uh, and then I can just do symmetrize again in edit mode. Symmetrize. Symmetrize. There we go. Beautiful. And now manifold man has been really truly rigged up. Uh, now, one thing that I forgot to do was I forgot to set the arms to not be not deform. So I'm gonna select them both and make sure that they are set to not deform the, uh, the, the IK related bones that are part of this inverse kinematics thing. And yeah, all right, cool. Boom, boom, control P, automatic weights so that the knee or the elbow target doesn't pull part of his arm with it. There we go. There we go. Manifold Man is more animatable than ever. Incredible. He's so manifold. <laughs>
we can actually we can move his uh, his pelvis down and his legs automatically bend. So it's very easy to make him squat because his body kind of figures out the whole IK thing. Um, I can even split the viewport here and do a version of the viewport where we just see him in 3D like this without the bones in the way. And uh, get a bit of an idea of how he's doing. Kind of an interesting guy. Here he is sitting in a chair. Guys, he's a, he's a, little, he's a little disturbing looking, but it is what it is. Poor manifold man. <laughs> Poor guy. Maybe uh, rotate his hands, put them uh, put them in front of him somewhere, like so. Maybe bring them together, put them into his lap. It's a lot easier to animate him like this, though, than it would have been a minute ago. Put his hands together. Ooh. Uh. Um. Uh, we gotta reset the scale on these things. This is uh, it's getting out of hand. <laughs> uh, one, one, one. There we go. All right. There we go. He's happy. He's clapping, holding his hands together. In a moment of of, of silence, fingers intertwined, all three of them. I, I feel so much for Manifold Man. There we go. He's thinking. I'm the thinker. <laughs> Not the best posture in the world. But uh, that, that's because of the way that his, uh, his torso is deforming. Um, perhaps if we gave him less of a ergonomic stance. Kind of like so. And then moved his shoulders back forward rather yeah he's he's a little you know it's not it's not in great shape i think his elbows just need to be back so we just move the elbows back yeah there we go there we go move the elbows out a little bit yeah okay that actually you know what he doesn't look uh horrifically deformed anymore that's pretty good see it, it was his arms were kind of doing this that's that's where the problem was but now that the elbows are pointed backwards and a little bit out to the side. He actually looks pretty uh, pretty healthy. His arms need to be a little bit more forward. But yeah, it's a lot easier to pose somebody when uh, when they're like this. So it's a lot worse trying to pose a character when uh, when they're not, you know, nicely rigged up. So there you go, manifold man. He sits. <laughs> Questions, concerns. Moving along, it's 5.55. We've, we've covered this introduction to rigging. This is what it's like. I, yeah, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Are you aware that Blender has its own humanoid rig? Yeah, I, I am. Are we talking about Rigify, the one that we talked about at the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Okay, because like, when I was looking at like stuff for setting up IK in, or setting up inverse kinematics, it's like, I think the humanoid rig has the ability to like set that stuff up. So instead of having to sit here, move bones and set up the inverse kinematics yourself, it would just develop the rig, but it would have like a ton of arrows on the floor. Yeah. 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 I've seen Rigify. You have to actually position the skeleton for Rigify to work. So you do, it gives you like a starter skeleton. You put it in the right places, you push a button and it, it does all the magic for you. I don't like Rigify because it, it doesn't do a good job of hiding uh the features of it that are, are you know using blender's own functionality behind the scenes and I, I find it a little frustrating to work with however i also think it's important to like implement this yourself to some extent because you know rigging is a universal skill it's not just a feature of blender so having a healthy introduction to how ik actually works like like how it's you know what what is a chain what is a pole target you know, how, how are things working behind the scenes rather than just pushing a button and getting all the arrows at your disposal is, I think, healthier. Right now, Unreal Engine is taking over animation. Like, the latest versions of Unreal Engine have presented more detailed rigging and animation tools to the point where you can now build an entire skeleton in Unreal. 
You could actually model in Unreal. It's not very good. But you can then do the skeleton in Unreal, and then you can do the rigging in Unreal, and it's going to be a completely different set of tools. So I don't want to teach people how to use an add-on in Blender that's like very specific to Blender. I want, I want people to understand what's sort of going on. You know what I'm saying? The other thing about Rigify, um, as fun as it is to like to like manipulate in Blender, it doesn't exactly translate all that well when you like import it into other engines. Like for instance, it like it breaks really badly when you try to import a Rigify model into like Godot. Um and another thing is That's probably uh, not Rigify's fault, by the way. Probably not. It's probably just the the way uh, Godot handles bones. It's really weird. I would bet that Rigify is using some special Blender stuff that isn't standard with engines. Guys, at the end of the day, here's the thing. Here's here's what you should understand. Rigify generates a a rig, and the rig is the combination of both deformed bones and non-deformed bones. So a deform bone deforms the mesh. It's the only bone that matters when you export an animation. A non-deform bone is something that's very important and specific to Blender. A non-deform bone in Blender is going to be there to drive other bones. It's there to make your life in Blender easier. So Rigify generates a bunch of non-deform bones, but fundamentally, if you export it right, the only thing that's going to come out is the deformed bones with, like William just said in the chat, baked animations. So the animations are just the bones that are deforming. Like it's not, there's no magic going on here. But it's, you know, the fact that you guys clearly have experience with Rigify and you're asking these questions shows that, like, you're, you're making those mistakes because you don't have that, I'd say, that, that understanding of, like, a deformed bone versus a non-deformed bone and, and, and how how everything is actually working behind the scenes. And I think that that is exactly why I'm not teaching Rigify today, because I think it would be better to, to understand, you know, fundamentally what a bone is and what, what's coming out of Blender, what isn't coming out of Blender, that sort of thing. Does that, hopefully that my point is, is, is clear. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Like, it's like you got to learn it's like you got to learn the uh, stuff behind the scenes before you start using the shortcut methods. Yeah, yeah, I think it's healthier. It's a lot healthier. Rigify uses all of Blender's like layers and tricks and stuff, but like the stuff behind the scenes is is fundamental and unchanging whether you're in Blender or Maya or Unreal Engine. Yeah, fundamental yeah. or in Unity. Or in I've Unity used... doesn't let you rig. Does it? Can you rig in no, no, no. You can't rig in Unity, but I export rigged models into Unity. Gotcha. I was referring to platforms. I think so. Unity at some point had like an rigged. humanoid auto-rigger or something like that. Interesting. I can't recall, it's... but that was like so, a long time ago. That's for like linking it into their animation system. I don't think it was to like actually um, add it in the bones and like set up low weights and everything. Uh -huh. Cool. <laughs> okay. All right. It's now six. I'm going to skip over to, uh, to actually continuing the, the programming stuff from Unreal Engine from last time. Is, uh, is everyone, how are we feeling guys? We good? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Alra, you are, you are on Devil Up since before Devil Up was like in the state that it is now. Are you, where are you from? You don't have the roles that come with onboarding. Sorry to single you out. I'm just I'm just curious. I you know, before we start the next one, I'll stop recording as well. <laughs>